So now that we have completed the PWM experiment, I wanted to do something different. So I want to build a high voltage power supply. But before I present the circuit for that and how to do that, I want to warn you guys to not try this at home unless you're highly experienced dealing with high voltage circuits and systems because this can uh, easily cause serious injury or even death. And even if you don't hurt yourself, you can easily damage your equipment. So absolutely do not try this at home. We just want to learn about the theory and we want to do this experiment in, in, in a safe situation and then uh, we can enjoy seeing how the circuit works, but please do not try this at home. So I'm going to try and build a high voltage power supply using a transformer. So let's um, assume that I have a 1 to 1000, approximately 1 to 1000 uh, transformer that I would like to generate a high voltage with. So if you remember from one of the previous videos when I was talking about a, a camera flash, a, a similar principle was being used there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a lot of current through the primary coil of the transformer and quickly turn that current on and off creating a very large voltage across the primary of the transformer which then will get multiplied and create a very very large voltage in the, in the orders of tens of thousands of volts coming out from the secondary and this happens because if you imagine a DC current through an inductor which you abruptly disconnect you're going to get a voltage across that inductor which is proportional to the rate of change of the current. So the V across the inductor is L, it's inductance, times DIDT, which is the rate of change of current through it. So if I can turn current on and off an inductor really fast, I would be able to generate huge voltages across it, and then of course with the transformer, even larger voltages on the other coil. Now in order to put a large current through here, I would need a power transistor. So I'm going to use a Darlington pair transistor, which is in a single package. I need to use a Darlington because a regular power transistor will not have enough current gain to be able to be driven with a single op amp. What does that mean? Imagine I have one amp going through this and the beta or the current gain of this transistor is let's say 50. Then I would have to provide this guy with 20 milliamps of current from my op amp and the op amp that I have is not able to do that. But by putting them in a Darlington configuration, so by getting a uh, in a single package transistor configuration like this, the beta of this transistor is multiplied by the beta of this one, so I get beta squared. So in this particular unit combination, I can get beta as high as a thousand. So then I will have no problem driving uh, this uh, configuration using my op amp. And I'm going to use a current limiting resistor in series so that we don't damage uh, uh, the transformer and of course not to damage the op amp itself. So I have already something like this in a single package. So I'm going to combine this with a transformer and I'm going to get my transformer from an interesting place and I'm going to show it to you on camera and have, have put this portion of the circuit together. So we have already built this from before. We had three op-amps from before. So we're going to take this, connect it to our Darlington, to our transformer, and we should be able to get some crazy high voltages. And I'm going to reduce the pulse width make it very very narrow so keep this guy on and just turn it off for a brief moment and turn it back on really quickly creating a large voltage here so let's take a look at that so here's my transformer some of you may recognize this if any of you has ever uh, have, uh, have any interest in auto automotive industry you would recognize that this is an ignition coil so this is the coil that uh, some cars use to generate the spark in the spark plug which then runs the engine so the little spark that ignites the fuel in an internal combustion engine is sometimes generated by this guy. This thing is, uh, is, is pretty amazing. Uh, first of all, if, I don't know if you can hear or not. I don't know if you can hear that sound, but it's full of oil. It's full of oil so that it can be kept cool. The entire transformer is submerged in liquid so that it can dissipate the heat coming out of it because you can put a lot of current through it. So this one is 12 volts and it says external resistor required because the coil, in the coil resistance is so small that if you put 12 volts across this you may uh, burn it up because a car battery can generate so much current. Now on the other side of this I have added a heat sink and my Darlington transistor that I showed earlier. So the Darlington transistor, let me turn it upside down so you can see how it's wired up. The Darlington is a, uh, a TIP147, it's an NPN device, so I've connected uh, its collector to the positive terminal of the ignition coil and its uh, base and its emitter are going to go to the power supply and to the PWM signal. 
and the negative goes to the negative power supply of course and the high voltage comes out of here so usually a high voltage cable is con connects this to a distribution box and that distribution box then goes into spark plugs for an internal combustion engine so we're going to combine this little guy uh, with our PWM generator and then we will have a fully analog standalone high voltage power supply and you can make a Jacob ladder out of this or something else but we're going to just generate some sparks so again I want to repeat do not try this at home uh, this is uh, I've done this before when I used to be an undergraduate many many years ago and um, be very very careful um, so uh, let's see let's uh, look turn it on and, and test it and, and, and while I'm going to do this I'm going to move to the other side of the lab and I'm going to connect uh, the, the circuit to my analog scope again because I don't want to risk damaging the digital scope and then we'll also use a different power supply so let's move to the other side of the lab connect this up and make some big sparks so here's the setup for the final experiment as I mentioned I've moved on to the other side of the lab where I can use my analog oscilloscope there's a power supply up here, which, uh, which these two wires come from, which you cannot see in the frame. Uh, the power supply powers the PWM circuit that we've tested thoroughly already. So I know I can generate a pulse modulated signal. And on this side, I have the ignition coil. The ignition coil uh, is connected to the Darlington transistor and a heat sink here. Going back into the PWM, this is a ground. And this guy is also my ground signal with a little needle at the top and this is a long wooden chopstick. Even though this is the ground signal and even if I hold this nothing happens, just to be on the safe side I'm going to hold this chopstick far away so that when I bring it to the output of, the, of this little guy I'm not going to have risk anything in order to be shocked. So I'm going to put this down for a second. I will turn the power supply on. You should be able to see the pulse with modulated signal there and then we can uh, generate some spark. So first I'll show you the spark from far away and then we'll focus on it and take a look. So turning the power supply on. I'm at zero volts now. So I'm going to go all the way to 12 volts. So you can see the PWM signal right there on the scope. I will take this guy and ready? See what's happening with the scope. There's so much noise generated by this massive amount of current that's drawn by this big spark that uh, it messes up the entire thing. So the noise that you're hearing is because let me turn this off while I explain that. The noise you're hearing is remember we are generating a high voltage signal, but we're generating it using an AC signal, which is in fact broadband because you're generating tiny pulses, which the spectrum has frequencies all over the place. You can hear that because of this, the, the amount of current that's uh, ionizing the air, uh, it collides with the air molecules and, and creates noise you can hear, and the noise contains a whole bunch of frequencies because it is an AC signal. So let me uh, focus onto the very tip of this guy. You can have a better idea of what we we're talking about. Uh, it's gonna focus on the background, so let me do this. Let me do that. There we go. So, here we go. I'm gonna turn the power supply back on, then I will bring the needle close so you can see the spark close, close by. So, here we go. Turn it on. Wait for focus, and here it is. From a centimeter and a half, the spark starts to form. So it has to be a very, very large voltage. So I can't quite remember what the dielectric breakdown of air is, but you can calculate how much voltage that is based on the minimum distance where uh, sparks begins to form because the air dielectric breaks down. So. I, I can't quite remember if it's 10,000 volts per centimeter or so, but you can find out and post on the, on the comments so you can get that so other people may also benefit from uh, figuring out exactly how much voltage we are creating. Well, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this episode's experiments. There's a few new uh, projects coming up and I'll be uh, finally reviewing the Regal power supply. 
and uh, there's going to be a whole bunch of interesting experiments there so come back uh, and check that out and leave us a, a comment on the on the youtube or on the website and let us know what the what you thought of the of the pace of this particular video was it too fast was it too slow i'd like to know um, what is the best combination of theory and practical stuff so that most people can get uh, benefit from these videos at the same time, if you uh, leave comments and um, subscribe or vote on our videos, it will allow us to finally become a YouTube partner and then we don't have to split the videos into multiple sections. It will be easier for everyone to watch them. So I hope I see you next time and there will be more videos coming soon.